Hey everybody, in this tutorial, which is going to be a bit more in-depth, much like our previous tutorial, where we replaced a sky in our image, well, we're going to be looking at uh, the reflection that appeared in the water uh, and replacing that reflection now using sort of similar methods. We're also going to take a cloud that appeared in that uh, sky and we're going to get rid of it uh, in order to sort of better create a uh, more realistic image. In our previous tutorial, um, with this same image here, we replaced the sky in our background here with this mountain setting. And then we did a fairly good job to sort of merge the uh, the edge of the, the foreground in this image with the one that, uh, with our background mountainscape there. So in this image, or rather what I would like to do now is one of the challenges with the image we had previously was that there was a cloud that was visible from the old sky. And also there was no reflection of the mountain. So in this tutorial, I wanna take a brief moment to basically talk about how we're going to get that mountain uh, as a reflection in the water here, and then also look at trying to get rid of that cloud. So I'm just gonna navigate back to manage mode and we're gonna find that ACDC file that we had, this guy right here, where the cloud is visible, and we'll just go through the process of essentially making that change uh, so we can get rid of this cloud and now add the mountainscape as a reflection. So I'm going to open this image in edit mode, and we're going to do a couple things. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to copy our layer two, and if you remember from that previous tutorial, our layer, layer two is literally our mountainscape in the background. This is the uh, this is what we're going to be making a copy of. I'm also actually going to turn off this photo effect as well, just by clicking the eye icon next to the photo effect here. So let's make a duplication of layer two here, our mountain. Uh, I'm going to duplicate it by right clicking on the layer and clicking duplicate. Uh, just as a note, you can also duplicate a layer by clicking on the duplicate layer button that's underneath the adjustment layers panel on the right here. What I'm also going to do is I'm actually going to move this to the very top of our layer panel, and the reason why is because we're going to make a flip of this. We're essentially going to flip it in half. Um, and to do that, I probably need to zoom out, so I'm just going to click on this zoom icon down at the bottom here, and that's okay. To flip this, we need to take this layer and we need to use the Move tool. So I'm just going to click on the Move tool, which is in the tool main toolbar on the top on the left here. And all I'm going to do, this doesn't need to be perfect, uh, so all I'm going to do is I'll slightly increase the size of our image just so it goes slightly around the edge of our, you can see that there's now a bit of a margin around the edge of our, our artboard. And all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this one end and I'm going to flip it in half. And again, this does not need to be perfect. All I want to do is just gently flip our image and replace it like that. With that complete, I will commit the layer which is commit, once again, is just at the top, just on the preview panel here. And all that does is it just tells us that we're finished with the moving of this layer, which we need to do in order to move on. I'm actually now going to hide this layer because we're going to be utilizing our layer one uh, that we've made previously uh, in order to make another selection. And that selection is going to be the water. So I'm just going to hide my layer two copy, which we'll call, I'm actually going to right click to rename it. And we're just going to call this our reflection layer just for uh, clarity's sake. Um, so with a reflection hidden from view, I'm gonna go to my layer one here and I'm gonna make sure that I'm clicking on the actual image layer itself, not the mask. And on the image layer, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make uh, a selection with the brush of this blue portion of our water here and uh, the cloud. So let's go up to our brush selection tool, which is up at the top here, brush, brush, uh, pardon me, brush selection. And I'm going to make sure that smart brushing is turned on, that magic is turned on. And all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to brush the blue part of our water here. Um, I might just expand that slightly. And then what I'll do is I'll just gently make my way down to the edge here and try to capture all of this blue area in here. Um, I might also, I might also turn it off just to capture this intersection here. So to grab this, cloud i'll just turn it off for that just so we're not so we're just capturing everything um to turn smart brushing on and off again it's just at the top here and you just use this drop down bar to swap between magic and off um 
Okay, so here's our active selection, and this is what we're going to use in order to essentially copy that reflection. And uh, to paste that reflection in the background, the one that we flipped here. So with this active selection, what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate all the way up to our reflection layer here. And I'm actually going to turn this layer back on. And what we'll do um, is we're just going to make a mask with our active selection. So with this layer active, I'm going and with our uh, selection active, I'm just going to go down to the bottom here and click on uh, add layer mask. So now if I deselect using alt D or going to select and deselect, you can see that our um, our, our skyline, our, our mountains are now present and visible in our image. But we have a bit of a ways to go to blend this into our final image because uh, there's some fraying and weird looking uh, uh, discoloration between the blue sea on the or, um, lake on the on the right and then the uh, the sky in our background. But it looks like we can see our island okay, which is good. Uh, so that's a good start to uh, that's a good area to start from. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is I'm going to once again I'm going to click on our mask, our active mask on our reflection layer here. And let's uh, go into a brush. Um, so I'm going to click on our brush tool up at the top left here. And much like we did in the previous tutorial, I'm actually going to use a combination of black and white foregrounds. And I'm going to alternate between those two in order to brush away a little bit of our reflection and brush on the reflection where we need. And just a recap of that, uh, if we're looking at our our mask here, this mask contains some very important information. And what that information is, is it essentially presents black and white to us. And that black and white is telling us that the black portions of our mask are turned off and uh, the white portions of our mask are turned on. And we can see that is reflected. I'll just hide the other layers to illustrate this. We can see that is reflected in our mask here. So if we look at our preview pane and we see that this bottom left hand corner is visible, right, in the sense that it has visual content in it, and we look at the remainder of our image, which in this case is transparent, right, is a transparency, we can see that that is reflected um, in our reflection mask, that the bottom left hand corner is white, aka turned on, and that the top right hand corner, all of this area right here, is turned off, aka is black. And if I go to reflect or invert that uh, that mask, so if I navigate down to the invert button, you can watch my mask alternate to change. So now the white area that is being presented is the opposite of what we just saw earlier, and the invisible portion is the uh, is the opposite as well. So whenever we're working with masks, by clicking on the mask thumbnail itself, we can actually interact with these mask properties. One of which is to invert those properties. Okay, so now that we have our masks there, what we can do is we can interact with those masks. And the way that we interact with a mask is by brushing either white or black on that mask uh, to essentially mimic on or off. To illustrate, let's just unhide all of our adjustments with the exception of the photo effect, which we won't need right now. And also, I guess we don't need clarity either. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on my image, okay? And all I'm going to do is... I'm going to brush uh, white in this area. And so what it's going to do is I'm just I'm just left clicking with my mouse. And as you can see, it's it's sort of illustrating or bringing in more of that mountain background into our image, which is ideal because we'd like that to come off as close as possible to the shoreline as we can get. And I'm just going to make my nib smaller and my work my way around here, as you can see. Another note is I have my opacity set quite low. So when I'm working my way around here, I'm just gently touching those elements to just bring up a little bit more uh, uh, visual elements there. I'm not I'm not going uh, to the maximum 100%, and the reason why is that would be quite jarring in comparison to a little subtle effect. And this is going to be even more true when we try to blend this dark blue in with this uh, light gray in the in the sky here. And the way we're going to do that is dramatically uh, maybe increase the nib width to about that much. So I'm going to increase my width width, nib width to about 290. And I'm going to keep the opacity quite low. Let's keep it at 15, say. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to brush on black in this sky area. And why I want to do this is you'll see I'm 
looking to, um, oops, there we go. Just want to make sure that we're interacting with the right elements here. All I want to do is be very gentle about that transition. And by really reducing the opacity and also reducing the nib width, this gives me a lot of greater control over that area. And I can basically make a smoother transition from that pretty egregious dark color water to that of the um, this sort of light color sky. So again, all I'm really looking to do is make just a gentle transition versus a crisp transition, which is what we had previously. Now you may say, hey Adam, that's great and all, but I'm actually can still, <laughs> I can still see that cloud in here. So we need to address that cloud because it's pretty prevalent in this, uh, in this background area here. And I just wanna make sure that I get this right edge here. So what I'm gonna do is because there's this kind of swoopy um, pattern on the right here, I'm actually just gonna increase my opacity to about 50 to see if I can take that out, which I think that's looking way better than it was previously. So that's good, that's what we want. So let's get rid of the sky now that we've sort of slowly reduced the opacity on, uh, on, on this here. But maybe before we do so, we can actually add a bit of a blur effect to our, our um, reflection. Because right now it's very crisp and you know some reflections can be you know, pretty much uh, crystalline. Uh, but this one, just given the water and also if we're looking and comparing to our previous image, you can tell that there's a bit of um, not necessarily blur, but vertical movement in this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna blur this area slightly uh, after I'm just finished this one corner here, which I think just needs a bit of a touch up there. There we go, I think I'm happy with that. So what I'll do is I'll take this layer right here, okay? So this layer that is this reflection. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add an adjustment layer and that adjustment layer is going to be blur and instead of blurring our whole image what we're going to do is we're going to clip this adjustment layer by using this di um, this diamond uh, that's on the left of this adjustment layer and we're going to clip it to the visual layer beneath it so the visual layer beneath it is in this case our reflection layer and as you can see if I uh, alternate between clipped and unclipped you can see the difference of the area of effect with this on with this off this clipped with this unclipped. So you can see that our blur is just impacting the reflection layer with the mask that we added. Um, and it's only affecting in this case, uh, uh, that part of the image, it's not being applied to the remainder of the image. But I don't really want a Gaussian blur. And I definitely don't want a blur that that's aggressive, that's that aggressive, because right now we have it set to about 20 in terms of our settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the strength of our blur to about seven, say, and we're actually going to apply instead of a Gaussian blur, a directional blur. And one of the benefits of a directional directional blur is that it blurs to a specific angle. So what we can do is we can control that angle and you can see uh, you can see that angle change and move very subtly as I sort of work with this. And um, I'm just going to leave it at the default values because the default values are quite flat. And I think that works with my image here. But I, I think we'll also maybe reduce the strength just subtly just by using this bottom right hand corner here. But that to me looks a little bit more realistic than just this like really harsh crisp uh, um and it also does a, a good job of sort of helping it blend into, pardon me, the water there. One other thing I would like to maybe deal with too, though, is because I don't necessarily want my blur to be impacting this island section here. So what I'll do is I will take this blur mask, so the mask that's on the blur layer itself, and I'm going to use a black brush, which is going to turn off the effect of a blur wherever I brush. And in this case, the only area that I want to... Um, to, to unblur is this little mountain area right here. So I'm just going to brush on gently in this area to sort of re-pull it up and to visually, uh, you know, uh, have that element re-enter. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly increase the opacity and I'm just going to brush it on even stronger in that area just so I can really visually get that element popping out Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out and you can see that that's much easier to see 
uh, it's sort of impacting the uh, the island uh, gently instead of being uh, very aggressive like it was before. That blur is now not impacting that layer. The last thing we want to do is remove this cloud from view. And in order to sort of truly see it, what I need to do is I actually need to hide my reflection layer itself. So once I hide it, you can see that there's very clearly a, a cloud there, which is not present in the sky in this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate all the way down to my layer one, the layer that actually contains the cloud, as you can see here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, zoom in a bit. And I'm going to make a smart erase on this layer. Smart erasing is a destructive change. So if you want to keep this layer's cloud for some reason, I would just recommend making a duplicate of layer one. But because I'm fairly confident I want to remove this, I don't really need to see this in the future. I'm not going to make a duplicate. I'll just leave the layer and I'll make a destructive change to this layer. I also want to be clear too, I need to be selecting the actual image layer itself and not the mask because this cloud appears not on the mask but on the image itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a selection with the smart erase brush selected up at the top menu right here. All I'm going to do is basically make a selection like that that covers the contours of that cloud. And I'm going to work through, uh, that was a pretty bad uh, selection. You might need to redo some of these sometimes because they can be a bit, uh, because it's an um, a uh, it's like a machine learned uh, operation, you might need to go through and, and sort of find one that you can work with. This one's a bit better than a previous one, so I'm just going to go through and I'll clean up some of these artifacts that appear here. And that sort of blends it in nicely with the water that we see beneath it. So now with the reflection and the blur present and no longer the cloud that's on layer one, if I zoom out and if I place my photo effect at the very top of all my layers, you can see that I've done a fairly good job of not only removing that cloud, but actually creating a background that's more true to the one that we added in our previous tutorial. Thanks for watching this reflection replacement tutorial. If this is the kind of style of tutorial you like, you like the length and detail, that sort of thing, please let me know. Uh, I'm just trying to gauge interest in regards to this style. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, just fire them in the box below. And uh, I read everything, so I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Take care.